Yes. Thought I'd do another little shit video. You know, because I haven't done a video for about three weeks. You know, boxing's been a bit dead on it. It's been a bit fucking dead, you know, because of the lockdown. So it's a bit dead, but it's starting to come back now, isn't it, boxing? You know, Eddie and putting on a show in his big back garden. But I'm not really bothered about it. You know, I've turned into a bit of a casual. You know, I only want to see, like, the main heavyweights fighting each other. You know, Joshua's fighting fucking Polyf. You know, who cares about that? Tyson's fighting the Dossa. You know, Dillian's fighting Pavekin. You know, waiting about three years for a real world title fight. So, boxing's not really the best right now, is it? And it should be. It should be the fucking best it's been for a long time. Because you remember that really boring period in boxing, you know, when the Klitschko brothers were dominating the heavyweight division. You know, that fucking boring period. You know, where they were jabbing and grabbing and fucking Dr. Iron Fist. You know, that kind of shit banter. You know, it was fucking boring, wasn't it? You know, when the Klitschko brothers were running the heavyweight division. You know, that was a shit period, wasn't it? Really fucking boring. You know, where they were jabbing and grabbing, it was really dull and uninteresting. But you know, nowadays, you know, we got some really fucking interesting heavyweights. But they're not fighting each other, are they? Now should be a really exciting time, you know, in the heavyweight division. You know, Deontay Wilder complaining, saying Tyson cheated, you know, with his glove. He's still fucking going on about that, isn't he? The Dossa. You know, saying that he's got a big fucking dent in his forehead, you know, like Frank Warren. He's making all these excuses, isn't he? You know, I've really fucking lost interest in the Dossa, you know. You know, especially since that twerking video came out. You know, men dancing like that, it's a bit fucking disgusting, isn't it? It's fucking horrible, man. So, yeah, boxing's been a bit dead recently. So I've struggled, you know, to do videos and try and fucking come up with something to talk about. But, you know, since the last video I did, I managed to get a little sponsor. You know, Carl Froch, you know how he loves promoting gambling and fucking poker. He loves promoting poker, don't he, Carl Froch? Well, I got a little sponsor, you know, from a little shit gambling company. You know, they fucking offered to sponsor these videos, you know, it's a little gambling company. So that's quite good, isn't it? So check out the link in the description, you know, if you're an, a gambler and go and have a little gamble, but it's a bit immoral, isn't it? You know, fucking promoting a gambling company because, you know, some people, they fucking gamble their children's inheritance down the drain. Their houses get repossessed, don't they? You know, because of their gambling addiction. But Carl Frost doesn't give a fuck about that, does he? Remember when Carl Frost used to talk about his brother, leader alcoholic Frost, you know, being addicted to alcohol and how having an addict in his family, you know, caused his family a lot of stress, you know, but he's okay to promote gambling, isn't he, Carl Frost? Yeah, he's a bit immoral, isn't he? He's a bit immoral, you know, like Coogan. Taking all that sponsorship money, you know, from those MTK Global Drug Pushers. He's a bit immoral as well, isn't he, that Coogan? Or money's money, isn't it? Money's money. It is a bit immoral selling drugs and taking drug money from people, but it's money, isn't it? Money's money. So I can't really blame Coogan or fucking call the contradiction frotch. You know, and I'm quite happy to take this sponsorship money, you know, from this little shit gambling company that's sponsoring these videos. 
Money's money. Yeah, they're giving me £50 a week. You know, and you might say, oh, that's nothing. That's fucking nothing. But it is, you know, an accumulation of like £50 a week and, you know, selling a load of shit merch and fucking people subscribing, you know, to my subscription page, Patreon and fucking... Yeah, it all adds up, man. And I used to work part-time, you know, in a little dead-end job, you know, in a bar doing security like Coogan in EastEnders. You know, Coogan pretending to be a hard man, you know, with his little badge. You're not a fucking hard man, are you, Coogan? Stop trying to give off this tough man image, telling people to be safe. You're not a fucking hard man, are you? You know, I've said it before, you know, it's all right calling yourself Ricky Hatton's bodyguard, but that's just a fancy title, that is, isn't it? That's just a fancy title. That means absolutely nothing at all, that. That means nothing. But yeah, I used to do that kind of dead-end shit, you know, like working part-time in a bar doing security, like Coogan in EastEnders. You know, but then I started doing these videos, you know, and I started to step up sexually and financially. And you know what I realized the other day as well? I realized that I've actually got more money than Tommy earns. You know, how the fuck can I have more money than Tommy earns? Tommy earns is worth 50 grand, his net worth. How can I have more money than Tommy earns? He was like a four weight world champion, you know, and he's worth 50 grand. You know, that's fucking ridiculous in here. That's what I mean about boxing. It's, it's like, it's like what Mayweather says. You have to make smart investments. You know, you have to be smart, you know, with the money that you make. You know, Canelo trying to shortchange Billy Joe Saunders, you know, in terms of money and fucking preparation time. So that fight fell through, on it? Canelo against Billy Joe Saunders. What do you think of that? <laughs> Billy Joe Saunders is saying that, you know, he hasn't been given enough time, you know, to fucking prepare. You know, he's saying he's been given like six weeks or seven weeks and it's not enough time, you know, for him to get himself in the best shape to beat Canelo. And like I've seen a lot of people slagging Billy Joe Saunders off board. You can't really blame him, can you? Because he's already going to be up against it, you know, fighting Canelo on his own show. You know, he's he's going to get robbed anyway, Billy Joe Saunders. So, you know, to get any chance of winning, he's got to be like really on it. But, you know, just getting like seven weeks notice, it's not enough time, is it? You know, people say, yeah, but you should stay on it all year round. You should be a a full-time pro, but, you know, I've seen Billy Joe Saunders in an interview saying that his grandma nearly died, you know, he said that she was suffering, you know, from ill health. I don't know if it was related to the coronavirus, but, you know, if your grandma is fucking dying, you know, you can't just fuck her off and just go abroad, you know, and go and train in a training camp. Just on the off chance that you might get the fight with Canelo. This is what I mean, man. It's fucking stupid. I boxed against this guy called uh, Cello Render. And you know that same day, my grandma died. I'm not asking for sympathy or I'm not trying to like give off a little sob story. I'm just telling you the truth. I was fighting this fucking guy here for a few little poxy grand. You know, in some little dead-end leisure center in the middle of nowhere, you know, for a few poxy grand, you know, and I got disqualified in that fight as well, you know, for hitting after the bell. So the fight wasn't even worth taking, you know, but I took the fight, you know, for a few little poxy grand, you know, while my grandma was dying in hospital. So sometimes you have to fucking prioritize, you know, and the fight with Billy Joe Saunders and Canelo, it wasn't definite, was it? You know, Canelo, he was saying, oh, yeah, I might give you the chance. I might give you the opportunity to fight me. I'll see, you know, there's a few names in the hat. 
So your name might be the one that I choose, you know, that's no good, is it? It's no fucking good, man. You know that fat cunt Mick Hennessy? That's what he did. You know, when I boxed Chris Eubank, he like tried to like look for an opponent for Eubank, you know, at the last minute, you know, hoping that it wasn't a hundred percent, you know, so Eubank could get the win. So boxing's a load of shit, isn't it? So some people are saying, oh, Billy Joe Saunders, he should have just fought Canelo, he should have fought him, he should have fought him, but you're not the ones that are going to have to deal with the loss. You know, losing a fight is fucking horrible. I've lost relatives. Some of my relatives have died. And you know, the sadness of them dying is nothing compared to losing a boxing match. You know, and I seen Billy Joe Saunders get interviewed and he said that, you know, if he just took the fight and he would have lost, you know, he would have felt really depressed and it would have fucked him up psychologically. And it can do, you know, losing a fight. It can really fuck you up. You know, Umar, IFL Umar, he said in an interview the other day, you know, that Billy Joe Saunders was offered like two million pounds, you know, to fight Canelo. But that's shit money. That is shit money. You know, if he did get offered two million pounds, 50% of that is going to the tax man. You know, he's going to have to pay 50% to the tax man. So he's left with a million, yeah. I don't know what kind of percentages he's paying, you know, at his level. But, you know, when I was boxing, I had to give my fucking manager 25% and my trainer 10%. So I was paying like 35%. I don't know what percentage Billy Joe Saunders is having to pay out of his purse. You know, you'll probably have to give a bit of money, you know, to those MTK Global drug pushers who are managing him. You know, Eddie Earn, he's probably taking a little percentage in it. Billy Joe Saunders is going to have to pay his trainer, Ben Davison, a percentage. So out of that £1 million that he's coming out with after taxes, you know, he might lose 30%, which is 300 grand. So he might get 700 grand. Which for the average person is quite a lot in it, but he's already a multi-millionaire, Billy Joe Saunders. He's already got money, you know. So is it worth like losing a fight, you know, to get a few hundred grand? You know, for the average person working in Tesco's, they might say, "Yeah, take the risk. Yeah, it's a lot of money, seven hundred grand." But he's already got money on it. You remember when the boxing board fined him a hundred grand, you know, for getting the prostitute to slap the innocent man. And he just paid it off just like that, you know, a hundred grand. So he's already got money on it. So is it worth losing to Canelo? You know, at short notice, just to get a few hundred grand, it's probably not worth it, is it? He's already got that money. And he was asked in an interview recently, you know, if him not taking the Canelo fight could stop him from getting like a career defining fight. And he said he's already achieved and he has on it. He's won a British title, Commonwealth, European, two weight world champion. You know, all this legacy stuff, you know, Tommy Earns is a legend, but he's worth 50 grand. I've got more money than Tommy Earns. Imagine that. And I haven't even won an area title. You know, Tommy Earns is punch drunk as well. You know, he can't really talk properly. You know, if you listen to his interviews, he's a bit fucked. You know, and Emmanuel Stewart turning up the temperatures in the gym. You know, so he like really dehydrated himself to get down to welterweight. So he didn't have any like water around his brain, you know, to like absorb the punishment, to stop his brain from rattling. You know, when he was getting fucked up by Hagler, so he's a legend, isn't he, in boxing, Tommy Earns, but he's worth 50 grand and he's fucking punch drunk. So you know all this being a legend bullshit, just forget all that shit, man. Just make that money and just retire with your health intact. You know, fucking Canelo saying, yeah, I might choose you as an opponent. I'll let you know in about three weeks. 
when I've already been in training camp for two months. It's no good, is it? You know, Canelo is fucking basically doing to Billy Joe Saunders what Mayweather did to Canelo, you know, saying, yeah, you can only have a few weeks notice to prepare for the fight and you're going to have to sign a little rehydration clause so you can't come in over 10 pounds what you're weighing up. And that's a big deal, you know. You know, when you're trying to, like, dehydrate your opponent so you've got the edge. Canelo learned a lot from Mayweather, you know, like the little fancy defensive moves. You know, that little fancy shoulder block and fancy shoulder roll, you know, that he fucking started doing, you know, once Mayweather did it to him. He got that from Mayweather, didn't he? You know, all that fancy shoulder blocking and, you know, shoulder rolls and all that. He got that from Mayweather, didn't he, Canelo? You know, now he's copying Mayweather, you know, trying to dehydrate his opponents like how Mayweather did to him. And he's on drugs as well, ain't he, Canelo? You know, trying to fucking get the edge even more. Yeah, Joshua looked like he was on drugs the other day, didn't he? You know, and he like went up to Tyson Fury in Marbella. He looked a bit drugged up, didn't he, Joshua? You know, compared to how he used to look. You know, when he was struggling sexually. Yeah, he didn't used to look all that, did he, Joshua? He's definitely drugged up as well, you know, like Canelo. He made the most of the lockdown period, you know, where there was like no drug testing. Because he didn't used to look that big. That increased bulk has come along, you know, like during lockdown. And it's not like the gyms are open properly. Probably got his own gym on but still, he's definitely drugged up as well, you know, like Canelo. Yeah, what do you think of that photo? You know, there's not really much to go on, is there? You know, I don't know why nobody recorded it, you know, because they were supposed to have had a little shit conversation with each other. So I don't know why nobody's recorded that footage. You know, that little face-off with Joshua and Tyson, you know, that's potentially exciting, isn't it? It's got so much potential. You know, say what you want about Coogan, but at least he's always there with a camera, you know, picking up juice. You know, he's always fucking there, isn't he, Coogan? But this photo here, it's just not much to go on, is there? Tyson schools Joshua on points, don't he? That's the general opinion, you know, of people in boxing. That Tyson Fury schools Joshua on points. Yeah, that fight build up would be quite interesting, wouldn't it? Mike Tyson and Roy Jones, they're fighting each other, aren't they? Yeah, what do you think of that? It's a bit daft, isn't it? It's a bit... It's hard for me to call them old and washed up, you know, because they're two icons in boxing, but I don't know, I don't know what to think of this. You know, Mike Tyson is looking impressive on the pads, but like I've said before, it's just like a little 10 second clip on the pads. You know, I'd like to see him, like, for six rounds on the pads, you know, see how he gets on after that, six rounds on the pads. Because he can look good in 30 seconds. It's it's nice and impressive, isn't it? But, you know, he's been smoking a lot of weed. You know, and he hasn't been living the life, has he? You know, he spent a few years snorting cocaine as well. So he hasn't been living the life, you know, a few little seconds on the pads. You know, it's a bit misleading, isn't it? And I seen Mike Tyson, you know, on the uh, Joe Rogan podcast, and he was saying that he's not interested in boxing. This was about a year ago. He said he doesn't train, he doesn't live a life, he's got no interest in boxing. You know, he looks a lot happier in life, don't he, Mike Tyson? Which is good to see. It's good to see him happy in that, but I don't think he's got it anymore. But neither is Roy Jones, you know, he got fucked up by Enzo Macronelli. You know, let me have a look at Roy Jones' last opponents. You know, after Roy Jones got fucked up by Enzo Macronelli, he fought a guy called Viren Phillips. 
You know, I've never heard of him. I've never heard of him. Then he boxed a guy called Rodney Moore. Beat him. I've never heard of him either. Then he fought Bobby Gunn. You know, I've never heard of these fuckers. He boxed him in a World Boxing Foundation World Cruiser title. You know, it's a lot of shit in it. And then he boxed someone called Scott Sigmund in a vacant World Boxing Union German version cruiserweight title. So it's, it's fucking stupid, isn't it? It's fucking daft. They both passed it on, they're both fucking old as fuck. You know, they both got fucked up in their last fights. Roy Jones won a few fights, but he didn't box anybody good, did he? The only one I've heard of his last opponents is Enzo and he fucked him up. You know, Mike Tyson, he got beat up, didn't he, by Danny Williams. So it's just old news, isn't it? Just, it's just old news, man. But I think Roy Jones will win, you know. Because he seemed to have kept himself in better shape. You know, and he fought more recently than Tyson. And when I watch Tyson on the pads, he's thrown like short punches. But you know, if Roy Jones has got half the footwork that he used to have, he'll be able to get out of the way of those little short punches of Tyson's. So I think Roy Jones will win, but I want Tyson to win because you know Roy Jones, I've been reading up on him and checking him out and he was into all that cop fighting. You know, putting like knives on cops and like making them fight each other, you know, and fucking kill each other. So he's a cunt, isn't he, like that Gerald McLennan. You know, who was into all that dog fight. So I hope Mike Tyson fucks up Roy Jones, like how Nigel Benn fucked up Gerald McLennan. You know, it might seem a bit harsh, me saying that, but I don't know why he's fucking cockfighting, you know, putting knives on the cocks, you know, and watching them stab each other to death. So I hope Mike Tyson fucks him up. You know, like how Nigel Ben fucked up Gerald McLennan. Yeah, Mike Tyson likes pigeons, don't he? So I hope he fucks up Roy Jones. I don't know what it is with these old fighters, you know, who want to come back. I don't really know what it is. I don't get this psychology. I don't know if it's, if it's because they see the other fighters, you know, the young fighters getting that attention and that adulation and they kind of miss that spotlight. I don't know. But Mike Tyson has been getting the spotlight recently. You know, he's got a little YouTube channel, you know, and he's interviewing big names and he's getting the views and he's getting that adulation. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. You know, Mayweather, he was asked his opinion, you know, on the up and coming fight between Mike Tyson and Roy Jones. And Mayweather was like, yeah, yeah, I was the one who started these exhibitions. You know, because Mike Tyson's fight with Roy Jones is an exhibition. Mayweather was saying, yeah, I started these exhibitions. It was all because of me that these exhibitions in boxing have really took off, you know, it's all because of me, you know, Mayweather. He don't want to give any fucking hype to it, does he, at all? He doesn't want to give any hype to it. You know, because Mike Tyson called Mayweather a little scared man. He can't take his kids alone to, to school by himself. He's a little scared man, he's a very small scared man. Thank you, sir. Yeah, what do you think of that? Mayweather can't take his kids to school by himself. Do you think he's a little scared man? A little small scared man? Yeah, I don't know about that. Mayweather's a target, isn't he? You know, the kind of money that he's got, he's, he's got to be a billionaire, on it, or nearabouts. You know, and he's just, you know, it's all right being TBE in boxing, but, you know, in the streets, it's, a totally different thing in it. So I don't know. I don't know if Mayweather is a little scared man. 
you know, up into fucking have security, you know, to take his kids to school, you know, not being able to take his kids to school by himself. Yeah, man, you have to think about your kids as well, innit? You know that woman off Glee, you know, who died in the lake? She went on a little boat trip, you know, with her little son and fucking, they both fell in the water. And she managed to get the little son back into the boat. But she didn't have enough strength or energy, you know, to get back in the boat herself. And she got dragged down, you know, by the currents. You know what I mean? So it's so fucking waste, innit, of a nice, sexy woman like that. You know, she had security. You know, obviously you need your privacy, don't you? You can't have fucking people around you all the time. But you know, she had security on like a little boat, like nearby, you know, watching her and her son, you know, they would have fucking jumped in, you know, and pulled her into the boat, you know, pulled her to safety. So I think security is good, you know, if you can afford it. So I don't think Mayweather is a little scared man, you know, he's sensible, isn't he? You know, you need security, you know, at that level. You know, Tupac getting murdered like that, it's no good, is it? So you need fucking security, you know, when you're at that kind of level. So I don't think Mayweather is a little scared man. You know, for not taking his kids to school by himself, you know, he's doing the right thing, isn't he? He's doing the right thing, isn't he, Mayweather? Yeah, you know that fucking snitch. He'll probably get murdered as well, won't he? You know, for snitching on those fucking gangsters. So you need fucking security, you know, when you're at that kind of level. So I don't think Mayweather is a little scared man. You know, for not taking his kids to school by himself. You know, he's doing the right thing, isn't he? But yeah, fuck Roy Jones anyway. You know, I hope Mike Tyson fucks him up. I hope he fucks him up. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. But I think Roy Jones will win, you know, but we'll see how it goes anyway. But yeah, that'll do, you know. But you know, before I end this video, I need to do a few little shit shout outs, you know, to people who have subscribed to my subscription page, Patreon. But, you know, shout outs aren't that interesting, are they? They're only interesting to the person that you're shouting out. You know, no one else gives a fuck. So I'm gonna have to put a photo of a nice attractive woman, you know, in the video while I give these little shout outs, you know, to try and make them a bit more interesting. But he kind of ruins that photo, don't he? He fucking ruins that photo, don't he? Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut him out, you know. You know, while I do my shout outs. Cause he really fucked up the photo, didn't he? So yeah, let me give a few little shit shout outs. Yeah, shout out to James Glossop. Shout out to Andrew Smith. Shout out to Sam. Shout out to John Manley. Shout out to Joe Morrison. Yeah, shout out to fucking Brad. Shout out to Cool MD. Yeah, thanks for subscribing to my new little shit subscription page, Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching and thanks for buying merch and all that stuff. Yeah, thanks for watching, yeah, thanks for that.